Liberal Senator James Patterson joins me live now. Uh, Senator, thanks so much for your time. It's the second week of Parliament for 2020. Did you really think the government would be such a mess so early on? Thanks for having me, Laura, and what an introduction. Um, I acknowledge that uh, the last couple of days have been a bit untidy. Uh, there's no way of spinning that. I won't insult you or the intelligence of your viewers in, in doing so, uh, but I think the fundamentals are still sound. Uh, we've got an economy that's growing. Uh, we've got an unemployment rate, which is uh, the envy of much of the world, uh, and we are delivering on the things we promised the Australian people that we would. The Liberal government, the Liberal Party, I should say, doesn't have much control about what happens in the Nationals' uh, party room, but was a week on, was Michael McCormack wrong, do you think, to just reward his backers? Well, we have no control at all, in fact, what happens in the National mm -hmm. Party, and I respect the fact that they are an independent political party and that their own internal affairs are a matter for them. Uh, and as you know, Laura, the National Party leader, the Deputy Prime Minister, uh, allocates the ministries mm. to his fellow National MPs uh, with, within his own good judgement. Yes, uh, he does, but uh, perhaps that judgment wasn't so good after all, given a week on and that we're still seeing the divisions. Well, I think as a general rule, Laura, I think we're all responsible for our own behaviour in politics. Uh, there's a lot of disappointments in politics. Everybody has ambition. It's not always realised or at least not realised in the timeline that you might want it to. Um, but that doesn't give you licence to, to misbehave and act out. And it's certainly not an excuse to say that you or your friends were passed over for promotion. Yeah. OK, well, it has seems the debate within the Nationals and within your government too is over coal and the future of coal-fired power, emissions reduction, climate change. This has certainly been something that we haven't been able to grapple uh, as a nation and as a parliament over the last 10 years, or you could even go back 20 years or so. What is your view about what, where the future of coal is in this country? And I'll bring you back to where the current debate is at, at, at the moment, given the feasibility study at Collinsville. It's whether the government should give any assistance or even indeed have, have any, allow any new coal-fired power plant in this country. What's your view? Yeah, I'll try and take both of those questions in succession, uh, Laura. So first of all, uh, coal has a big role to play in our power generation now and in our exports to the rest of the world. And I suspect both of those things will last for some time, but I don't have a crystal ball. And one thing that politicians are not perfect at is forecasting the future and anticipating technological change. Um, as to your second question about whether there should be taxpayer subsidies or support for coal-fired power, my very strong uh, first principles view is that the end point that we should be aiming at in a, in a few years' time is for all sources of energy to be able to stand on their own two feet. That is, uh, be successful, uh, fail or succeed mm. based on their own intrinsic qualities, not based on subsidies uh, from government. And the truth is that right now there's very generous subsidies for the renewable energy industry and we are also conducting a feasibility study into the Collinsville plant, as you mentioned. OK, so you would be suggesting that there is market manipulation and if you do have subsidies and support for renewables, why not coal? Well, there's unquestionably a lot of government intervention in the energy market, and my view is, in the long term, we should be winding that intervention but down. But at the moment, you're and picking allowing the winners, private... essentially. I think there's a lot of truth to that, Laura. Yes, government is very much involved in picking winners, whether it's through the Clean Energy that? Finance Corporation or the Renewable Energy Target. Well, I, I would acknowledge that we're going through a transition at the moment, Laura, and transitions can be messy and they probably do justify and require more government intervention than would otherwise be the case. But it's the end point that I'm most concerned about. What are we aiming for? And that, in my view, should be the winding down of all subsidies for all forms of energy and allow private uh, investors to take over. I think they've got better judgment about what's going to succeed or fail. OK, so no renewable energy target in the future. Well, the renewable energy that target that we have right now is expiring, in fact, this year. Uh, Would you like to see it renewed? Uh, success from the point of view. Well, I don't think it's necessary because uh, all, there's a lot of renewable investment happening in Australia uh, absent uh, the renewable energy target. And in fact, on per capita terms, we are among the highest level of investors in renewable energy in the world. Uh, and renewable energy advocates say uh, that it's now uh, cheaper to build than all other forms of energy. Now, if that is true, if that is the case, uh, then it shouldn't require in the long term any further subsidies. OK, a conversation that uh, won't end there. We'll speak to you soon. Thanks, Laura.